Hi, Eric. How are you? Yeah, are you? So, uh, one thing you know about Moster more than anyone is how tough he is. He's able to play through injuries. He's done it all year with the ankle and the knee. Do you anticipate he'd be able to play through what he's dealing with now with the ankle? Yes. <laughs> and uh, it, was there even a way for you to gain even more admiration for him? You, you, are, you already have a ton. Uh, how he played in limited snaps second half Sunday. Yeah, I, I think. You know, all these guys are beat up at this time of year, and especially my guys who get hit every time they touch the ball, and it's such a physical position. And I, I think it's just a credit to, you know, Raheem in what he does coming back every week and getting ready to go. He's beat up, it's physical, all those kind of things, but he's got a passion for this game, and he plays that way, and I think that shows up. It seems like uh, one thing that the offense has been trying to do in recent weeks is get Devon involved in the passing game. And I know there's been some, some deep attempts that just, just barely missed on. Uh, what's been maybe some teaching points and some things that you're trying to key on with him to execute in the passing game more? Well, nothing more than all the rest of them get. I mean, it, the, we see these pieces as interchangeable. You know, I mean, yes, we put certain plays in for certain guys and things like that. But, you know, the, the question we just had a second ago is a case. If, if Raheem can't go, then one of those other guys has to come up. So... We, we teach them all the same. There's no specific teaching points, and we're not trying to emphasize it necessarily more getting him in there. I mean, we he's healthier than he was, you know, for that stretch earlier in the year, and we want to get him in and we want to get him touches because he's got a chance to help us when he gets the ball in his hands. I watched the last, uh, watched the last hard knocks, and I went back through and I saw the other day. I'm going to highlight uh, Alec and Ingram before you was even mentioned in the room. getting the ball for him was drafted without the drinking touchdown. How often do you uh, sort of reach the, you know, Go away from some of the X's and O stuff to some of that camaraderie, you know, just the guys in the room. I hope I do it as much as I do the X's and the O's because, you know, that's a, it's a close-knit room. And, the, you know, those relationships that are developed in that room are important, not just the X's and O's and talking to them about their assignment and this and that. There's a personal side to everybody in there, and there's things to share. And so hopefully when you draw, you know, the other parts of their life into it, First of all, it lets them know that you care about them as a person and the things that are going on in their life, as well as that you care about them as a football player. But I just think the whole thing is so important to develop in the camaraderie within the room, that they're all invested in each other and that I'm invested in them, and hopefully in a reciprocal manner that, that they're invested in me. Jeff Wilson had a key contribution at the end of the last game. He was pretty open with us yesterday about how it can be frustrating to not get his many mm -hmm. repetitions. How have you noticed him uh, sort of navigate this season, how it's gone? In the most professional way possible. You know, he's stayed the course. He's been here. He does everything right. He's prepared, and he gives himself the best chance. So when he goes in the game, he's going to perform well. I had no doubt that that situation was tailor-made for him the other day, and he went in and excelled in it exactly like I thought he would. But you guys run a pretty uh, expansive running game and complex running game. I'm curious what Alec Ingle contributes to that at that unique position that's not really that popular in the NFL. How does he allow you guys to be so expansive? Yeah, I think Alec's value comes in in just the flexibility that he gives us. We line him up in a bunch of different places. We, we ask him to do a lot of things. We ask him to do traditional fullback things in run and pass. We ask him to do some tight end type things in both run and pass. Um, We've, we've done some more protection stuff with him as the season's gone on. So there's just – he gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility to sort things out also. Alec is very, very smart, and so we put a lot on him to kind of sort and fix things on the move a lot of times. And I think what he does is he brings a calmness, particularly to our room, but I think even to the offense at times because you know, all right, he's going to figure out a way to make this right. Even if we don't necessarily go to the right people, he's going to adjust and, and do something – or the one thing we do know is he's going to be physical when he does make a decision to go do something, and I think that that helps our offense tremendously. Eric, uh, question on the run game. I know the production has improved over last year. Um, this year, I, I believe you're 13th or 14th in rushing attempts. I think last year you were 29th. Is the difference in the players and their performance, or is the difference now we're just feeding them the ball? Well, I think it's probably both. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what the correct answer there is other than we know that we need to run the ball. We want to run the ball in this offense. Mike believes in that. We start with that. We talk about it constantly. And it's a point of emphasis for our whole group to do, and everyone's involved in that. It involves every room on offense. Um, and we want to be good at running the ball. And I think, 
you know, obviously, you know, the passing game has helped open up some of that. That may be a, a factor in that as well. You know, having, a, the, you know, as well as we're performing on the edge with Jalen and, and Tyreek and other guys, two was playing really well throwing it. So I think all those things go into it. And, and every year is different. Some years you run the ball more or better, whatever it is, but we've got a talented room running the ball. We've got a room full of guys that can run the ball. And, uh, and I trust all of them with the ball. We trust all of them with the ball, I should say, better. Coach, what kind of challenge do uh, Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith provide you guys? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're two talented backers. Um, you see them on tape, they run, they hit, and I, I think, you know, they're just, they're really good players. Um, but the challenge, as always, is is what we're going to do. I mean, we, we know that they're going to line up in certain spots and they're going to be there, and it's a challenge for the front, you know, the guys up front to block them, and it's a challenge for us to find the right spot to put the ball in and to, to hit it downhill where we can and to be aggressive and decisive in how we're attacking the line of scrimmage. Um, Eric, uh, Mike McDaniel talked about seeing the staying focused in December and it gets increasingly tough for a team because the division title is here or the playoff berth. And in, in your experience, what, what is the best way to stay focused? I mean, you know, players have social media, they've got family. Yeah. How do you keep the tunnel vision? Um, it's, a great, it's a great question. Um, I, I think it, and it's a very cliche-ish type thing to say, but it, it literally is take one thing at a time, you know, you, you can't look past anything. Um, I've had experiences where we look past something and, and been incredibly disappointed. Um, but I think that at the end of the day, it's taken one day at a time, one meeting at a time, one practice at a time. That is truly as simple as that sounds. That is the answer to it because you, you, it's too easy to jump a step and to get just smacked when you're not expecting it in this league. And that's, that's the beauty of this game. And that's, that's why you have to put a ball down every week and go play. You have to show up every week and go inside the lines, and that's where it's earned, and that's, how to, and that's right. That's what's right about this game. But it's one day at a time, and it's, and it's not skipping any steps. It's doing the little things, and monotonous as it may be, and hard as it may be, boring sitting in meetings or this or that. And, that, you know, that's on us too as coaches. We got we to gotta figure out ways to touch them in different ways where they stay engaged, and, and it means something.